All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So, what everyone needs to do uh, for Monday, you have 11 through 20, we're doing a primary source. Tuesday, you're 21 through 30, you're mapping your primary and your due. On Wednesday, you have your normal test, your focus and your pieces are due. This weekend, you need to be working on your focus and your pieces, but I don't think we'll be complaining, will we? way better than an essay so please make sure you're getting your job done you have a test 25 questions all multiple choice on wednesday so we're back to a normal week uh, we have a lot to do on your whiteboards let's do it real quick on your whiteboard please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who divides rome in half what is the name of the dude who divided rome in half who is it shannon Diocletians. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, what are the names of the two halves Rome was divided into? What do we name the two sides? It's very tricky. It's not very tricky. Yeah! What is it, Tess? No, oh, that's your capital. What do we got, Madison? East and West. What is the capital of the Western side? What is the capital of Western Rome? Good. What do we got, Alexa? Rome. Rome. What is the capital of Eastern? Good. Sophia? Gone. <laughs> I like how you really have to say every part. Constantinople. On your whiteboard, tell me what side thrives. What side thrives? Good. Evan? East. East. Why does the East thrive, Evan? Because they have constant. Oh, well, it's a, a trade. <laughs> trade. Trade. You see how that's a better answer? All right. Trade. They have the trade of the Silk Road going through Constantinople. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Uh, I think I'm okay. Let's do it. Okay. So, we have the early Byzantine Empire. We have... Caesar of Papism, this is where we left off, is that correct? Yeah. Who can raise your hand and tell me what Caesar of Papism is? What is it, Evelyn? It's basically a way to uh, go around Absolutely. Why would they have to go around the whole God thing? Why can't they be called a God? Evelyn. Why can't they be called a God, Jared? Because God shows No. Daniel. Yeah, they're Christian. So what is why does that have an impact? There's only one God. It's rule number one. If you're a Christian, there's only one true God. If you're a Christian, so you can't be a God if you're Christian, because there's only one God. So they come up with a nice little work away around it. So Caesar of Papism is the belief that the emperor of the Byzantines was selected by God, and that gives him authority to rule. This is absolute rule. You need to know that. Who can raise your hand and tell me what absolute rule is? Come on, people. What is it, Reagan? It's where the um, ruler controls not only the religious side of the entire world. No, that's more of a theocracy. What do you got to do? Oh, uh, Lord, you die. Oh, you can't use absolute in your definition of absolute. How does it all depend? Whatever the emperor says is what happens. If the emperor wants us all to shave our heads, guess what we all do? Shave our heads. If the emperor wants us to wear red every single day, guess what we wear? Red every single day. Absolutely. Control every single aspect of our lives. Okay, so you need to know that the Byzantine court wears purple. It's one of those weird things about AP that they love. Everyone who's in the royal court, who makes up a court? We talk about kings and emperors, we have courts. What's a court? We gotta make sure we thank God I asked. Shannon. The nobles. It's all the nobles and the ladies, it's all the high class people, they're part of a court. Okay, have you ever seen like any movie about a king and then surrounded by all these people who essentially live off the king? That's the court. Okay, it's all the wealthiest people of that country. They all live and interact uh, in a small place. Okay, you need to know that um, that's, you just need to know that they are all about supporting the emperor. Everything is about the glory of the emperor. Okay, it's all about the glory of the emperor. Everything is about making the emperor better and be better. Okay, so skip a space. Just oh, it's all under Byzantine, but you need to know Justinian is a big name. Justinian is the most important person from the Byzantines. You need to know that he, his wife Theodora, is a big deal. Okay, his wife Theodora is a prostitute. 
But we're not going to hold it. We're not going to judge her for it. She's a prostitute. She was born into a very poor family. And I think we can all agree women don't have any rights. So there's only one way that you can pay for all of your siblings if you're a woman. And what's that? Sell your body for sex. That's what she did. Well, she ended up marrying an emperor. So I guess it all worked out. Okay. So... Justinian is the emperor, his wife is Theodora. Remember, Theodora is born poor. You need to know that. She is born poor. So, during his reign, who do you think she cares the most about? The poor. She knows where the problems are, so she fixes a lot of the problems for the poor. Theodora, your little star, is going to keep Justinian in power. Why do you think Theodora keeps Justinian in power? Think about it logically. It makes sense. Why do you think? Tess? Yes, yes. So at the beginning, do you think the people liked that Justinian picked a prostitute to marry? No, but in her death, she was celebrated in a larger, grander scale than Justinian was. Why? Because she genuinely helped the actual people of the Byzantine empires. She knew where the problems were, and she fixed those problems. She's pretty damn incredible. Can we agree? She was given a shit hand when she was born, and she ended up being born, uh, dying in one of the largest funeral processions the world's ever seen. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so, all right, you do need to know that he is going to be, uh, build the Hagia Sophia. You need to know that. The Hagia Sophia is going to be the largest church in the history of the world up until we get St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Anyone been to St. Peter's Basilica in Rome? Is that a massive church? Where, like, the Sistine Chapel is? Yeah? Okay. That's the largest church in Christendom. Before that, which wasn't built until the 17, uh, 1500s, it was the highest of camp of life study. Uh, of course, in Rhine, guess what you'll be studying? The high of Sophia. Uh, you study a bunch of stuff by Justinian. Okay? You do need to know that he's going to curate the Justinian Code. The Justinian Code takes all of Rome's 12 tables. You need to know this. this is a very big deal. It takes Rome's 12 tables, its law code, and simplifies it to about 150 laws. So it takes 5,000 years of Roman laws and simplifies it to about 150 manageable laws. So the Justinian Code takes the 12 tables, which are the laws of Rome, and simplifies them and makes it more effective. All right, what do you got? About 150. Okay, so that is a very big deal. Just so you know, the Justinian Code is going to be the longest used uh, codification of law in the history of the world. Once the Byzantines died, people still use the Justinian Code to implement. It's a very big deal. Okay. You need to know that Justinian wants to reconquer the glory of Rome. Okay. So Justinian wants to reconquer the glory of Rome and tries to capture all of the territory around the Mediterranean Sea. How does he do? It's pretty good. He gets a lot of it. I mean, he doesn't get all of it, obviously, but he does sure gets a lot of it. Okay? So he wants to recapture the glory of Rome, so he tries to reconquer all of the Mediterranean basin. He gets pretty far. Okay? You need to know that his general is a guy named Belsarius. Belsarius is the general that uh, Justinian has. Now, you don't need to write this part down, but Belsarius gets tired of glorifying Justinian by conquering all the territory. So he's like, you know what? Screw you, Justinian. And he decides to protect Byzantine. The Byzantines. He goes to Constantinople and tries to sack him. Well, Justinian does win, uh, and Belsarius is executed in public square. You want to know how he's executed? Sure. Yeah. No. Oh. Into How they do is they drawn and quarter him. And then they burn the body. You don't know what drawn and quarter is? What a drawn and quartering is is that they tie one arm to one oh. horse, horse. Oh. one oh. arm to another horse, and then your two legs go to two different horses. And so what they did is that before, while he was tied to the horses, and they haven't made the horses run yet, they cut 
they cut with a knife and they cut lines down his body so his muscles were already ripping and so when the horses yanked him his body ripped into like 25 different pieces it's pretty cool it's pretty cool it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, fun fact you don't need to write that down but let's make history alive shall we now you all feel a little nauseous perfect okay so the muslims are going to start rising in power a whole new religion is going to arise and they are going to be the ones who are going to start causing conflict for the Byzantines. So, the greatest threat to the Byzantines are the Muslim empires, which we're going to get to next week. Okay? So, they are going to try to take Constantinople. Why would the Muslims want Constantinople? Which eventually they will capture Constantinople. Why do they want it? It makes perfect sense. Brian? Yeah, it's a major trading city. All the world's money is going through Constantinople in one direction or the other direction. So everyone wants a city. The Muslims are trying to make it go for it. Spoiler alert! The Muslims will win in 1453. Okay. This is a very big deal. This is called the theme system. You need to know this. This is a huge deal. Oh my god, does this sound like evidence already? Because it would be a perfect example of evidence. The theme system is a way to gain loyalty amongst soldiers. Okay, now we've already talked about how the Byzantines reconquered most of the Roman territory, correct? Do you think that it was easy to do or hard to do? Hard to do. So you have a lot of soldiers fighting really hard, a lot of them are dying. So you need to bolster the support. You also have the Muslims who are rising in power very, very quickly, who are pushing from the other side. Do you need a strong military to protect yourself from the Muslims rising in power? Yes. So, military, super important or not so important? Super important. So that's why the theme system is implemented. The theme system gives land, okay, gives land to bravery and loyal soldiers. Gives land to brave and loyal soldiers. Uh, soldiers. Who can raise their hand and tell me why land? We talked about this before. Julius Caesar gives land. Why is land so important? Today, 2019, do we necessarily care about land? No. But why is it so important back then? Emma? Because land is like the most like, noble thing. No, noble. I mean, noble, I could like buy a tree and that's pretty noble. <laughs> no, no. I reject. Why? It sounds like you're like baking like cash in the back. No. Hey. You build wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have land, land, wealth creates wealth. You've heard that expression. Like you need wealth to make wealth. Like you can't start a business unless you have money. You start a business to make money. It's kind of conflicting ideas. Okay. Land builds wealth. So by giving these people land, they are making the next generation, not their generation necessarily, but the next generation significantly better. Then the next generation does significantly better from there. Which is why we've talked about how the United States has limited who has access to land, because we want to stagnate the growth of certain demographics here in the United States. That's why. Because land creates wealth. Okay? So you need to know that. Okay. All right. You do need to know that Western Europe is Western Rome is going to collapse. Okay, actually we're gonna pause, okay? You're gonna pause. You're gonna pause, we're gonna do some boards because we just covered like a ton of stuff. I don't know if you noticed, but it's all a lot. On your whiteboard, what is it called when the emperor of the Byzantine Empire is hand selected by God to rule? And he uses that to justify anything he wants. I got one, no. I said Byzantines, which makes it specific. Here on after Lily, that answer is correct. But when I say Byzantines, it has a fancier name. And Lily, what is that name? Do you see the difference? Going forward, you're always going to be direct, right when you say divine right. When it says Byzantines, it has to be Caesar of Office. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the land distribution system that was used and implemented to buy loyalty from the soldiers of the Byzantines. Good. What is that, Emily? 
On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the Golden Age ruler of the Byzantines? Good. Who is it, William? On your whiteboard, what is the name of his wife who is going to keep him in power because she genuinely cares about the poor because she was poor? Who is it? Lauren. Theodora. Theodora. On your whiteboard, please tell me who is the name of the general that actually helped restore most of the territory that belonged to the former Romans? What do you got, Cade? Belsarius. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the law code that Justinian helped create? Good. Brian. Justinian Code. The Justinian Code takes laws from where? You need to know this. Jared. Twelve tables. Twelve tables. And what are the twelve tables? Uh, Jared. Yeah, they're all the Roman laws. They take all 5,000 years of Roman law, they simplify them, and make it easier to use. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what color do the Byzantines wear in court? Good. What is it, Slav? Purple. Purple. All right, skip a space, and I want you to write Western Europe. I know, you started, you may have started something, but we're just going to skip it and just go to Western Europe. All right, skip a space, write Western Europe. Okay, the final, 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 final Roman emperor is disposed in 476. You need to know 476, the final Roman emperor is removed from power. Okay? 410 is typically when we say the Romans fall because that's when they take a massive blow and then there's like 30 years of chaos. But the official, 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 official last is at 476. Okay? Now, you do need to know that when we call Germanic tribes, okay, you need to write these down. Your Germanic tribes are known as the Visigoths, the Ostrogoths, the Lombards, and the Franks. You just need to know them. You don't need to know everything about them. You just need to be aware. In parentheses, I write barbarians. Why are they called barbarians? They don't know. They don't know why the Romans called them barbarians before their borders fell. The Romans called everyone who wasn't Roman barbarians. They were indiscriminate. They didn't care. Because they thought they, thought they were so dignified and so fancy that anyone who wasn't Roman were obviously barbarians. Now, are these people really barbarians like when we think about barbarians? No. Are they dirty, disgusting? Yes. Are they dirty, disgusting? No, absolutely not. They're just not Roman. You need to know that, so write that down. They're called barbarians. But barbarians just simply implies that they're not Romans. Okay? So that does not mean that they eat humans. If they're barbarians, they eat humans. I was like, that makes you a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> that's not. That's or not, cannibal. Or cannibal. I mean, that's not. But like, when you take a barbarian, you're like, right? <coughs> so let's start with the Franks. The Franks, and I would write parentheses France. Okay. They are going to convert to Christianity to gain popularity. They specifically change their religion to Christianity to gain popularity. Okay? So, with their conversion, they try to set up an alliance with the church. Okay? You just need to know that they try to do it. The Franks evolve into the Carolinians. You need to know that. The Franks evolve into the Carolinians. The Carolinians are Franks and the Franks are Carolinians. You need to know the Franks are just in unorganized. The Carolinians are organized Franks. The Carolinians are going to start with a guy named Charles the Hammer Martel. By the way, if you were trying to come up with a nickname of Samantha Bennett, Samantha the Hammer Bennett. I'm just going to put it out there, just float it to you guys if you want to make a stick. You know, that's pretty cool. I'm just going to say. Or the Charming, Samantha the Charming Bennett, I'll also accept. 
either or. Feel free to pick up either of those two instead of the new name you've already created. Probably won't like it. So, Charles the Hammer is going to be the foundation of the Carolinian dynasty. Okay, you need to know he is the first, and he defeats the Muslims at the Battle of Tours. This is a very big deal. He defeats the Muslims at the Battle of Tours. Okay. I didn't even get my stick. I have a stick. I broke a stick earlier this year. And I got a new one, so I'm trying to work it in. By stick, I mean New York. <coughs> it's very fancy, so please be impressed. Okay, come over here and take a look over here. So next week we're studying the Moors. Uh, we're studying the Muslims. One of the terms, there's multiple terms, but Muslims that were living in Spain were called the Moors. Anyone here been to southern Spain? It's cool, right? It's totally different architecture. Um, it's totally uh, Hispanic. That's all Hispanic is in Spain. But um, it's Islamic, which is really cool because of the Muslims. So next week we're really going to study how the Muslims really started. Is, um, Islam is going to start in the Middle East. I think everyone's not surprised by that. With Muhammad speaking to Allah in 410. Okay. Once Muhammad dies in 420, uh, at 622, all of a sudden, we're going to have a breakout, an explosion of uh, conquest by the Muslims. And they're going to start conquering territory. So the Muslims are going to conquer northern Africa, and then they're going to jump the Strait of Gibraltar. The Strait of Gibraltar, there's a gap of one mile between the southern, southern, southern tip of Spain into the northern, northern, northern tip of Africa, which is pretty cool. So, they jump from the north part of Africa, which is now going to be all Muslim, and they jump into Spain. And they stay in Spain for like 900 years. So, like, they're there for a long time, which is why if you've been to southern Spain, you're going to see tons of Muslim architecture and all that stuff, because it was Muslim for like 900 years. Anyway, the Muslims are then going to push into France. It is Charles Martel who stops them from spreading into France. Now think about it. <coughs> if the Muslims already conquered Spain, they're going to be there for 900 years, and if Charles Martel did not stop them from entering France, what probably would have happened? It probably would have taken over most of Europe, and what religion would we probably all be today? Muslim, yeah, because we're of European descent traditionally, looking at our uh, history. So, is Charles Martel a big deal? <coughs> is Charles Martel going to be herald a massive hero to all Christians? Yes, that's a big deal. You need to know that. So, the Spanish defeat. The Spanish Muslims are going to be defeated at the Battle of Tours by Charles Martel. Charles Martel protects Christendom. To know that Charles Martel is credited with uh, with um, protecting all Christians. Okay, so now Charles Martel is going to lead the charge, of course. Now Charles Martel is going to die, and his grandson is going to take over. So his grandson. Named Charlemagne. Okay, Charlemagne is going to be is uh, Charles Martel's grandson, and he is going to become ruler. So you need to know that he's going to create an centralized rule in Western Europe. That's a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Come on, why is centralized rule in Western Europe a big deal? When was the last time there was a centralized ruler in Western Europe, Sophia? Rome. It's been 300-something years since there's been a centralized rule in Western Europe, so it's a big deal you need to know. You also need to know that he is pro-literacy. What does literacy mean? Daniel? Writing. Writing and reading. Okay? He's pro-literacy, and he is going to unify a large chunk of Western Europe, okay? He's the first person to unify Western Europe. He is the first person to bring back education. He's just like a good guy, okay? He also creates Missy Dominacci, which you need to know, it's right there, Missy Dominacci. He creates the Missy Dominacci, which is an auditing of the government. 
It's essentially an audit of the government to ensure it's not abusing its power. Normal people like you and me, are we happy about that? Yes. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! In 2019, does the U.S. government have some corruption? <coughs> yes, every once in a while you always hear of, you know, some guy or some chick getting caught stealing money or abusing their power and position. And that's in 2019 where we have active watchdog groups. Imagine if we weren't trying to stop corruption in our country, how much corruption do you think there would be? A lot. Like, for instance, this week on Monday, you can remember that back then, or it's been a long time ever. Um, the FEMA dude who was running Puerto Rico, the guy who was in charge of the hurricane relief in Puerto Rico, was taking bribes. So what a piece of crap that guy is. <coughs> you agree? That's corruption. That's what uh, Charlemagne's trying to avoid, the abuse of power, which I think we can all agree is a pretty great thing. Okay? Now, you need to know that Charlemagne's rule challenges the Byzantines. Why does having Charlemagne in the West challenge the Byzantines? Who can tell me? Why, Brian? Kind of. Okay, so think about it. <clears throat> This is post-Rome. Post-Rome. There is Rome. The Pope lives in Rome. The Pope? There, what is a Pope? We haven't really talked about it. Okay. You need to write that down if you don't know. A Pope is the leader of the Catholic Church. At this point, is everyone Catholic? Yes. Everyone is Catholic at this point. Every single person is Catholic. When we have our first schism, which is coming up real quick here, then we'll have two. We'll have Orthodox and we'll have Catholic. Okay? So, the Pope who lives in Rome... Okay, is in charge of all Christians. So every Christ, every person who identifies as Christian is under the power of the Pope. Okay, so the Pope lives in Rome. They have the Byzantine Empire. Is the Byzantine Empire wealthy or poor? Wealthy. So who do you think is paying for the Pope to live? Yeah, the Byzantines are constantly sending money, sending wealth, sending protection, because they're the only strong Christian empire in the world. Okay, now all of a sudden we have a guy named Charlemagne in Western Europe. Hell of a guy. Okay? Do you think the Pope is going to favor someone in the West, or you're going to think he's going to keep favoring someone in the East? Well, you would be, you, I would continue favoring the guy who's paying the bill. You know what I mean? Like, ah, man, what a guy. Pays all this stuff. Look at this. However, the Pope decides to start favoring Charlemagne. How do you think that makes the Byzantines feel? Not good. We've been paying for you for like 400 years. Look at the life you lead. We've been paying for this, and now you're going to pick this guy. That's going to cause some major drama. So, what do you got? So, like, they got mad at the Pope for not having the Pope. Yeah, okay. So, like, imagine far, far in the future, okay? Do you have a brother or sister? Cool. Okay? So, imagine you have chosen a job in your far future where you can afford to pay for your parents' room, board, and food because your parents are tired. You, Daniel, are paying for all that. However, your parents love your brother or sister more than they love you. How would that make you feel? You would burn down that the house you bought, didn't, wouldn't you? Absolutely, and that's how the Pope feels. So, you need to know that Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne, Holy Roman Emperor, as a sign of respect and gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were the Emperor of the Byzantines, how would that make you feel? Oh, yes. Okay. Charlemagne is literally the second of the Carolinians. They've only been around for about 70 years. Like, the whole empire lasts 70 years. We're in year, like, 30. And the guy already made him a new uh, title called Holy Roman Emperor. Okay, the Pope does. So if you were a Byzantine ruler, how does that make you feel? Oh, you are livid. Okay, so what do you think they stop doing immediately? They stop sending crazy amounts of money. They stop sending money. Well, fine. This guy's so great, he, he can pay for everything. So this challenge to the Byzantine authority is going to cause mass, massive fraction. Uh, fraction. Fraction? Friction. Fraction? Fraction. It's going to break. It's going to break the church. A fraction. All right, so that's where we'll leave off for today we got pretty far here we go on the whiteboard let's do it on your whiteboard please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who defeated the moors at the battle of tours that rhymed come on i got one two three evan charles martel on your whiteboard please tell me
Okay. One is the hammer also scores. <laughs> On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the first centralized government in Western Europe called? What is the name of the first centralized government in Western Europe, uh, Europe called? Come on, I got one. Terrible spelling, but yes. I got one. Good. What is it? Ashlyn. Carolinian. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the Pope who gives the title of Holy Roman Emperor to Charlemagne? Good. Who is it, Emily? Leo III. Pope Leo III. On your whiteboard, what do we call the leader of Catholicism? What do we call? What is the title of the person who leads Catholicism? What is it? Shannon, the Pope, on your whiteboard, please tell me, where does the Pope live during the Byzantine? Where does the Pope live? Come on, people. What do you got, Sam? Rome. On your whiteboard, we're going to eventually have two Popes kicking it. Right now, we have technically like three Popes who live in the world. Eastern Orthodox has their own. It's a Greek Pope. He comes here every year. Have you ever been to, yeah, he wears all black and stuff like that. Um, he goes up to, what's that super, super Greek? What's a Greek thing? Tarpon Springs. He goes to Tarpon Springs every spring. The actual Pope of Greek Orthodox, and he throws a cross into the water. Oh. And then a bunch of, like, boys wearing all white jump in and swim for the cross. That's, like, the actual Pope of Greek Orthodox. Now, the Pope of Catholicism, Pope Francis. Thank you, I was going to uh, that's like two popes ago. Uh, pope Francis is your Catholic. Uh, he's your Catholic leader. He's okay. I used to really be a fan of him, but like, I've been disappointed. What? How old is he? Who? Pope Francis? Yeah. Pope Francis is like only like fifty or sixty. Yeah, he's pretty young. He's pretty cool in some regards. So I used to be a huge fan of him because he like sneaks out of like the papal palace and like goes and like feeds poor people and like cleans like oh, like. Like homeless people's feet. It's kind of his thing. He likes feet. Jesus cleaned a lot of feet, so the Pope cleans a lot of feet. It's a sign of like ultimate respect is when you clean. Like how many people have you cleaned their feet for? Parents. Parents? You yeah. clean your parents' feet? That's very kind. Okay. So you don't really clean that many people's feet. It's a sign of ultimate respect. Jesus did it to show respect, so the Pope does it. He's pretty cool in some regards, but my man has really dropped the ball with like sexual abuse against children. He's allowed it to continue, and he has not punished some of the highest cardinals. And as someone who was raised in Boston, whose church, at my church, there were kids who were being sexually abused by the priests, I have very little tolerance for a man who said he'd fix it. So I'm not that big of a fan of him anymore, but he doesn't suck completely. What do you got? How do you choose a pope? Oh, it's a whole big deal, man. Wait, is it one of the 